Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So in November, is it going to be five years that we've been doing this podcast? Five. Yeah. What? It's a long time. Five years. So we've talked about everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> we've talked about everything. And so what I was thinking is, and I don't know, not for like every week or anything, but sometimes I'll be doing coaching calls in Vibe Club and I'll be like, oh, that's an interesting topic. And and a lot of the time it's it comes up from my clients. It's not like me coming up with these magical ideas, but things where I'm like, oh, this concept helps people to understand it better. In fact, this last coaching call I had, both of the women that I coached, this happened where there was just something that was like, it was the language that they were speaking. It was how it made sense to them. And so I used how it made sense to them to explain the coaching. And and I just think that it could be cool to use things that come up in coaching calls as a way to kind of take them to the podcast and kind of dissect them a little bit, like where my head's at, like what's like what's processing in my head and how it can like help people on a bigger scale yeah. versus just the, the you know, one-to-one with the person that I'm coaching, but it's a, a group setting as well. Because when Monica had done a, um, a summary of the coaching call, which she does those in the Facebook group, there were so many people that were like, this call was so helpful. The stuff made so much sense. Um, this analogy really put it into perspective. So that's what I want to talk about today. Cool. So- I had a client submit saying that she um, she wanted help with enough. She had been in Vibe Club for like over, over two years now, I think. And she was like, I feel like I'm not quite getting it. And as is the case most of the time, whenever I see a submission like that, I think it probably has nothing to do with that. Like you've been here for two years, you know what it is, but there's something that's preventing you from taking action. There's something that's preventing you from listening to enough. That's what I always think when someone says they have a problem with their enough signals and knowing what that feels like. Most of the time, no, you don't. You know exactly what it feels like. The way you're struggling with it though, is that you're not implementing it for whatever reason. It's my job to kind of get down to the reason. So we started talking and she had shared that, um, it's really easy for her to stop it enough when she has a trip coming up. So like, again, there we go. We rule it out immediately that like, you do know how, but only if you have a looming event, which she referred to as, I don't want to mess this up, guardrail, right? right, right okay. Right, right. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't another word. Um, she s- said it's kind of like a guardrail. And I thought that was so interesting. So we kind of like just coached on that. What did the trip coming up that. have to do with it? It the only there wasn't a trip coming up. She just said that she can do it when she knows there's a trip coming up. But if she doesn't have a trip coming up or some like thing, some external thing, then it's really hard to stop it enough. Or like a wedding. Yeah. Or a deadline. Or my birthday is coming. Or yeah. a trip or some something. And all of these things are normally external things. And we've talked about that before on, on whether or not that's actually helpful. And right. I find that a lot of the time, a lot of the time it's not but it can help you take action for a little bit because you know this trip is in two weeks. So it's like, all right, buckle down. And so we kind of just talked about that a lot and broke it down to really clearly understand what is actually happening here. Do I have more control because a trip is coming up? No. So what's the difference between I have a trip coming up, that's enough, we stop here if the trip is coming, and no trip coming up, I don't know. I really feel like I should be able to eat more than that. And I, it was really good. And, and then all the negotiation starts and then we don't stop it enough. We keep eating. Hmm. We overeat. What's the difference? And so that was kind of what that coaching call was about was figuring out what is the difference. And I I loved that she was calling it a guardrail because guardrails keep you safe. They keep you out Mm. of danger. They, Mm. um, they're a safety mechanism. But no, it's your trip isn't making you any more safe. You've set up guardrails in your mind that say no. Yeah. (laughs) And sometimes people feel like they need guardrails in the form of meal plans, of a coach that is 24 7 Voxer support, (laughs) keeping food out of the house. Yeah. All these ways that we're like, the guardrails are honestly, the guardrails a lot of the time are like, protect me from myself. Yeah. Like, so it's an external person, plan, diet, um, rule book, uh, vacation, just something that's like this thing will keep you on track. And, th- and that's what a lot of people need. And I know we're, we're kind of branching out a little further than what I had talked with her, but I do think it's important to list all of those things because they're ultimately 
external forms of motivation that yes. are doing nothing other than changing your thoughts. There's nothing other than no negotiation. The trip is coming. And I and I made sure with her, I want to ver I want to clarify for everybody that I made sure with her that, okay, when you do stop it enough when there's a trip coming up, how do you feel? And that we took a it took a little bit of a while to get to get like a clear answer on that. Because what I was wondering as a coach was are you suffering a ton when you stop it enough? Because I want to make sure you're not under eating for your trip. So right. I'm going to got to clarify that for all you people who are like, Ground I have rules. the willpower to, <laughs> right. to not overeat or to under eat or to restrict because I've got a trip coming up. That's not what we're talking about on this podcast. I'm talking about, I know how to lose weight because I, I know how to listen to my body. However, it's a lot easier for me to do that when I have an external source of, <laughs> I don't even want to say motivation, but you know, something that is it's a, having it's it. It's a circumstance that changes your thoughts. Exactly. It's it's nothing other than like, it doesn't make it easier. It's not different. It's just, you have the ability to put up those guardrails that say, no, I'm not negotiating this. The trip is coming. We don't have the room here. Because that's another thing we talked about. She's She's down to wanting to lose her last like five to 10 pounds. And I asked her, okay, another thing that I see people struggle with is we have that room to move. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a trip coming up, you're like, no, we don't have that room. But when you're down to your last five to 10 pounds, you're like, is it really worth I it? I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if I go up three pounds, I'm still within this range of where I like to be. I'm not uncomfortable. So like there's not this intrinsic internal motivation. And that can be really hard yes. if you have your last of your weight to lose specifically. Yes. Yes. But it can also be hard when you're someone who's just used to having something to motivate you and you don't know how to do that from the inside. And so I'm trying to think, I think that that was kind of it, the conversation. So we I had think, to talk about- everyone's all constantly looking for that internal motivation. Yeah. I need something to push me. Yeah, or external motivation. Right. Yeah. But internal is you getting really clear on your reasons that can be strong enough to be a guardrail for you, which the only, th like, let's say like the guardrail is on the edge of a ship. And if the guardrail's not, you're going to fall over, AKA we'll say falling over the ship is overeating, you know, never following my plan. You want to put up guardrails that, that say, Hey, this is what you want. You want to stay over here. You don't want to go overboard. And those guardrails can either be like threats and deadlines, or they can be reasons and goals and desires of how you want to feel and how you want to experience your life, that can be a guardrail too. It's just for most people, they, they're they not threatening enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why people start challenges in 75 hard. And totally. Stuff. It's, it's, I'm starting this thing. There's the guardrails. Yeah. And you told me what the guardrails were. What are the rules? Yep. Okay. I have the rules. Everyone thinks they need that. Yeah. For it, sure. Yeah. And so the question is, how do we get to a place where internally the motivation is there? In a healthy way. Yeah, because what we also discussed was that she's not, she's almost, I would dare to say that she is having a better time when her vacation guardrail is up than when it's not. So we think we have that space. We think, oh, it doesn't really matter. Nothing's really coming up. I've got some room to move. But then what we're opening ourselves up to is endless negotiation and the back and forth and the exhaustion and the, damn, why did I do that again? I'm not going to do it today. Damn, why did I do it again? That's so much more miserable than healthy, safe guardrails that just say, we're not going to do this. That's exhausting. I don't have the energy for this tonight. You know. So I think that that is interesting that we almost feel like when we don't have that external motivation, we've got some like wiggle room, but that wiggle room normally isn't real because we do have goals that we want to hit. Because one of the other things I asked her was like, knowing what you have to do, knowing where you're at now, knowing where you're maintaining, knowing where you'd like to go, what would you rather do? Because you could totally just decide, I don't give a crap about the last five to 10 pounds. That's not, and we discussed like, you're not going to wake up feeling totally different or anything. So you can stay where you're at. You can keep that wiggle room. You can overeat sometimes and stay within that spot or you can find intrinsic reasons to keep going and you got to know why you want to do that because for most people losing the last 10 pounds is not motivating at all so she decided she wanted to lose the last of that weight and so I asked her why and it came down to how she wanted to feel and that she wanted to overcome more of that like emotional eating and 
eating past what her body says is enough. Okay, it just has to be enough for you in those moments to say it's not worth the negotiation right now. And that can be hard for people because like I said, they, they're not threatening. It's not threatening. It's not so, I'm so uncomfortable in my body. I've got to make a change. It's not like that. It's not urgent. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing writing on it other than me and like what I want. Not me and what is inevitably coming up very soon in a couple of weeks that we've got to be in a bathing suit for. And like- I think the problem people run into with the last 10, 5 to 10 pounds too is that they are content where they're at. Exactly. Yeah, you're there. You're not like you're not like suffering every day. You don't yeah. wake up and you don't have a very hard time moving through the world, or you know, putting on your clothes. Or it, it's like I would like it to be a little more. And that's where I see the biggest case for just the little. Well, I've got some wiggle room, and that's true. Unless you're also at the same time telling yourself, "I've got to lose this last ten pounds." That's the miserable in between. Yeah. Like, this is fine. I'm fine here. And I don't want to be here too. <laughs> it's like, just decide. It, does, it truly does not matter if you just stay here in this range or you work your way down to another range and then you figure out how to stay there. But don't want, don't do both. Don't want to do both. If you want to lose that last 10 pounds, you can't keep telling yourself, like, I kind of have a wiggle room here. And that wasn't her whole situation. But I asked her to just kind of like explore that fact that you're at a place where things feel pretty okay and you're at the end of that. And so keep. I asked her to keep that in mind when she has that negotiation start that just get curious of, is some of this the fact that I, I do have some room to move? That like, this isn't a life or death situation. Like this isn't a health problem I've got to solve. This isn't a dire need. It's just like a little desire that I have to, to finish what I started. And that's going to require of me to have guardrails that I set up for myself yeah. that come from inside of me instead of outside of me. And those can be hard. I told her straight up, I'm like, I'm not going to lie that this is easy because a lot of people want to lose the last of their weight just because they want to. Yep. Just because that's what they were before they got married. They have no good reason. And that's fine, but it's probably not going to work. Like, unless you can literally ha have that conversation start in your head where it's like, well, I feel like I should be able to eat more and be like, yeah, but you really want to be that weight before you were got married. For most people in the moment, that is not going to, that's not going to do the trick. So something to explore for yourself, but it's like, how do you want to feel? It, it gets hard. It gets hard at the very end of it because you kind of are just, I just want to get there because I want to get there. And sometimes you have to try to let that be enough in those moments where it feels like it would just be a lot easier and better to just eat. And you have the wiggle room. It's not that big of a deal. Well, for most people, those urges and desires to eat more are just more enticing than losing that last five to 10 pounds. Yeah. You're content and you're not going to look that much different. Yeah. Which and, I like to make clear to my yeah. clients like this, this is the reality of it. I'm not, I'm never trying to convince them don't care right. or let's do what you said you're going to do. Like I know coaches that do both, like eat one or the other where it's like, no, why not just do what you said or- or who cares? Yeah. This doesn't matter. Don't, it's not worth it. I don't care either way. I want what you want. So that's why I try to get really clear on what is it that you want here? And why do you want it? Why? And is that enough? Why? Because if it's not enough, it's not going to be enough. And you're going to keep, and then at that point, we just decide this. I've had clients where I've coached them, like, what if we just chill here for a bit? And you just see, and you stop making yourself wrong for like, stopping it enough and then overeating sometimes like that's being a human that's not sometimes i think that if people still struggle with overeating they think that they haven't like finished the process yet yeah. and i would probably describe that as like the difference between like having more of a chronic overeating problem versus a, yeah, i'm a normal human being that yeah. just overeats sometimes like you're right. not failing if most of the time you don't overeat and every once in a while you do i would say that's completely normal and yeah. towards the end of the journey here so right so, yeah. How do you, I mean, so like how, you know, say I, I decide I do, I do want to lose this last five to 10 pounds and my reasons just are not, they're not hitting like, like I wish they would. Like, I'm not afraid as a coach to, to be like, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to help you dig out some deep reason to lose five pounds. Yeah. You know, I can't think of a, an amazing one. 
It's it's hard to come up with a good reason for that. <laughs> yeah, it has to be like when push comes to shove and, and the negotiation starts like, no, we're not going to do this because we just decided that we want to lose five more pounds. And maybe something that can be helpful for your brain is like, and if we don't like it, we can just eat a little bit more and just gain that five pounds back. It's not a big deal. It's not permanent. It's not forever. This is what we want. We want to try and see if there is better than here. And if it's not, and I want five pounds of wiggle room, 10 pounds of wiggle room, good, go for it. That's what most people are doing. There's a little bit of a range that they maintain. I, I, I do think it's it would be healthy for people to, if they can't find good reasons to just stop and maintain for a couple of months and then reassess. Reassess in a couple of months. Like, how do you feel about it now? Do you yeah. still want to lose that five to 10 pounds? Yeah. And the alternative to that is also saying, I'm going to, you know, use the next four months to reach that goal. So it, it, it can go either way. It's like, let's chill. And that, for me, that depends on the person in front of me. That I have also coached another person with the exact opposite situation where it was like, let's just chill. Like you don't, and then let's find out if that's what you actually want. So it just depends but there's nothing wrong with either being like, no, we're going to get there and I'm going to know that the reasons are not going to be deep and heartfelt and like so compelling. They're just going to be because I want to. I want to see what it's like at that place yeah. and I want to see if I like it. That's where I'm going to get to. I'm not taking my foot off the gas. That's what I'm going to do. Or That's, that's valid. Yeah, or I'm not going to keep telling myself I want to when my actions are showing that like I'm kind of okay here Yeah. and I don't really care that I go up and down seven, you know, five to seven, I, I don't care. And I don't, I definitely don't care for the precision that is required to lose that last five to 10 pounds. I just, I don't want to do that right now. Maybe it's the time of year. Maybe it's the place you're at in life. But right now, like, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. And we're going to go up a little bit. And we're going to go down a little bit and up a little bit and down a little bit. This is, that's what maintenance looks like. Yeah. And I'm going to reassess. So you can reassess in one way or the other. Like I'm going to reassess in a couple months if I want to pursue that goal or I'm going to pursue that goal and reassess in a couple months if it worked, if I liked it, if I want to do it, if I want to continue and neither of those things being wrong. Yeah. Guardrails. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. People. Yeah, we just discussed that guardrails is just thoughts. There's a thought that comes up that goes, I have that trip coming up and that's enough for your brain to be like, whoa. That's not the trip. No. It's your thought about it. Yeah. And I want to offer also, like, it's a little bit of like, it's being motivated a bit by pain mm. in that situation or the avoidance of pain is a better way to describe it, which is just like, you do not want to be on that trip feeling uncomfortable. You do not want to feel uncomfortable when you put that bathing suit on. You don't like, so explore that as well, that there's something motivating, but it, the type of motivation could be coming from fear and trying to avoid pain in that way. And it can be harder to motivate yourself by excitement or by the goals that you have. It's just not quite as strong as kind of a threat right behind you of this like looming thing that is, oh, we better get it together. Yeah. So I thought that was just interesting. Just talking about the guardrails that are popping up are just the thoughts that you're having about why we should stop or why we should keep going. That's it. And if you have the right thoughts then it makes it a lot easier to stop. But I just want to encourage everyone again to explore how exhausting it is to negotiate so much. It's like, it's, that's why I told her, I was like, you're probably having such a terrible time, but you know how to stop the conversation. And that's what I like to look for is evidence that I already know how to do this. You do mm. when you have the right reason. Mm. So you need to find a reason and you need to, it's got to be right or you got to make it right. <laughs> like it's- Or you don't have one. Or Yeah. And then what? And no reason at all? Yeah. What do you mean? I can't find a, a good enough reason to lose five more pounds. Yeah. And I still want to, but and my the, yeah. the reason is just not there. And then you have to proceed with, okay, like I'm going to have to start making decisions and know that there's nothing really driving me that much. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's going to, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. The reason can end up being, it's just because I want to. Right. And I understand that that's going to be weak <laughs> come the time where this gets hard. Yeah. Yeah. Is it enough? Right. I would love to hear if anybody has like really, really good reasons to lose the last five pounds. Me too. You know? Yeah. I don't know how you would give me that information, but you know what I mean? Like this is like solid and like so important. Yeah. And what if it's just not that? What if it's just not? 
It's just that's just not going to be there. So it's going to have to be because I want to. And then if you take this to a broader perspective, and we're not talking about the last five to 10 pounds, because that's applicable to a lot of people who are listening to this podcast, it needs to come down to the reasons why this is important to you. You can create your own guardrails. Some guardrails are going to be a little more heavy duty than others. So when you have more weight to lose, the guardrails can be a little bit more solid versus when you have less to lose, where it's just kind of like, oh, I don't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter one way or another to me. A lot of people are in the place where it does really matter and it would really change the quality of their life and their confidence and how they feel about themselves and um, their health. And those are all guardrails that you want to be aware of. That's why in the Vibe Club coaching app, we talk about creating a, a thought plan. Yeah. And like you're when you do that, when you fill that out about like what's going to stand in the way today, what obstacles are going to come up, you're setting up your own guardrails. Like what do I need to hear in the moment where I want to overeat? That's a guardrail. It's thinking yeah. that you want to keep you quote unquote safe from these habits that you don't want to be engaging with anymore. Right. So that's speaking to it on more of a a broad scale of your guardrails can be created by you and they can come from an internal desire for why you want to achieve the goal of weight loss or healing your relationship with food. But they need to be considered and thought out and acknowledged and referred to again and again and again. And that's why it's an integral part of the app. So. Cool. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.